Please be quiet for that. So I'm going to start by saying that all games are awesome. Everybody likes all games. You know, we all like Pong, Super Pac-Man, Pac-Man. We all have one of those favorite games. I personally go back to play Metal Slug, I don't know, every two months. I download an emulator, I install it on my machine, I play for 10 minutes, and then it's gone. <laughs> but we all do it. You know, you're all guilty. <laughs> And I don't know why it is. I don't know if it is because all games were designed differently because of the limitations they had. I don't know if it is because of the graphics, because they were simpler, that they had to be more appealing in a different way. Maybe it's because of the replayability that they have. You know, you can play Tetris over and over and over and over again. <laughs> it's a different game every time. And that's why they're so cool. Um, the Raspberry Pi is awesome, right? <laughs> we love it. it, it's great, it's cheap, it's a Linux computer, it's got GPIO cores, Ethernet, it's, you know, a hacker's marvel, it's, I love it. So, because I go back to arcade games all the time, I always have the fantasy of having an arcade machine, right? I'm sure some of you do as well. And I started to look at how other machines work at the moment. Uh, like, if you actually were to look for arcade machine on eBay, you'd come up with 1,700 results. And the average price for those results is over 300 pounds. And, you know, that's a lot of money. The reason for that is because most of them work with full computers inside of them. You just put a PC at the bottom of it, you install some, you know, Windows, you put into an emulator, a special front end, and you go into the games, right? And that's obviously why the price goes so high. There's a different approach, uh, which is something called JAMA boards. JAMA was a standard that uh, the Japanese industry came up with, which is a way you wire up uh, the monitors, the way you wire up the controllers, the way the software had to work in some specific parts. So these JAMA boards are nothing else than people that have assembled enough chips and you know hardware to actually be able to store a small version of an emulator and run these games. Some of them actually emulate the full game in software without the emulator. And then there is a third option which is very interesting because it's also much cheaper than the full computer option which is using uh, video games consoles. So there's a lot of people doing arcade machines with the first Xbox. And I know it's funny that that game console actually is not good for that type of gaming, but it's good for retro gaming. <laughs> this leads me to emulators, right? If you look for the definition of emulate, it's just much or, or surpass something. And if you go to the website of any emulator, like any modern emulator, they're going to focus on saying how close to a real game the experience will be. Um, a lot of games are considered to be really almost perfect when they achieve 95%. So it's funny that the name actually doesn't mean what, what they are trying to do. Obviously, there, there is another thing to take into account in this project, which is most emulators that you guys are going to find if you, if you search for them, 
uh, are going to be for Windows. Thus, where everything is, for whatever reason, there's some for Mac and there are some for Linux. The problem with Linux and the Raspberry Pi is that the Pi is not x86, it's ARM. So if you want to do it, you need to be very careful with the version of the emulator that you want, and it needs to be someone that maybe has ported it to ARM, so it's not very straightforward. The way I approached this was first, I'm going to focus on finding the right software. I want to have my Raspberry Pi to be able to boot directly into my games, right? And then I'll figure out the rest afterwards. So the way I started was with Raspbian, which is the official distro for, for Raspberry Pi, which is a version of Debian, and then I just manually launched my games. You know, it wasn't great, but it was a start. And while I was trying to, to browse uh, the Raspberry Pi forums, there was this guy called Petroblog that, that came up with an image that all you do, you download it from his site, you dig it into an SD card, and off you go, you have a machine that boots directly into something called Emulation Station. And Emulation Station is just a front-end, um, so a menu that allows you to browse all your games and then select what game you want to launch, and it will do the job of launching the emulator. So it's just a basic front-end. And it's good. This is what it looks like, right? Um, if you only had Super Mario Bros, it will show this, and then if you wanted to go to a different uh, platform, you go right or left, and it will show Genesis or SNES, whatever. You choose a game, you hit OK, and it launches it. And the way it does it is there's a config file on Emulation Station that allows you to specify what engine aka what emulator to associate with each platform. So it was very easy for me to play around with different emulators, because different emulators work differently for the same game. So you, maybe you have a, an emulator that's very good for Street Fighter 2, Turbo, Alpha, something, but it plays Super Mario Shack, you know. Um, <laughs> you want to change, right? And I came across with this other one called Main for All Pi. And uh, Main for All was one of the major ports of Main. Main is uh, stands for Multiple Arcade Machine Emulator. And it was the first one that was ported to iOS. Uh, so it became quite popular, it got improved quite a lot. And somebody had this great idea of porting it to the Pi. I tried it, and the only game I actually cared, which was Metal Slug, worked fantastic. So I'm like, oh, I don't care about the rest, I'm going to use this one. <laughs> Modify config file in Evolution Station, and all my arcade games launch with it. Which got me to the next day, which was Evolution Station is great, but you can see that you waste a lot of screen space. It's, it's a bit strange the, the way it's presented. You maybe want to change platform, and it, it's a bit awkward. So I decided, you know what? I'll get rid of everything. I'll just launch. Main for all Pi directly, so I got a Raspbian change uh, boot up scripts and it launches straight into Main for all Pi. Nothing else to worry. Literally switch, off you go, select your game plane, which was the main idea behind the software part. Forget it even exists. Go and play. So I had the software part, and that was great, but this is what the real deal is, right? The controller, the joystick, the buttons are click, 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 you know? That's a cool thing, so I thought, well, maybe I should research a bit what people do and how it works. So I started to, you know, what everybody would do. Joysticks and arcade buttons on Google. You know, 20,000 results. So I started to read, I started to read, and I come across this website called Slackcoin, and it's really good, like, it's amazing, because it explains things like, Things that you wouldn't think of that are like those buttons, they're different types. They're not all the same. You want to play fighting games, you need to use this type of games. You want to play platforms, use these ones. Things like the angle the buttons go. Like if you're right-handed but put more power on your thumb, you need to put them here. <laughs> like, oh my god, people take these things really seriously. There's people that, that make their own cases for the Street Fighter Championship. It's like, oh, I'm I didn't know people would actually go to this extreme. It's a really good website. It teaches me a lot. There's companies, there's majorly three companies that make joysticks. 
two of them are Japanese, and one of them is American, Spanish. Um, and there's nothing else, really. Those are the three major companies. But with this, I knew exactly what type to use, which ones would be cheaper, etc. <coughs> so after seeing how it worked, I understood that I was missing a very important part, which was actually my controller. Uh, the controller is referred to the control panel, which is actually just where the joystick and the buttons go. So I knew I was missing joysticks, buttons, micro switches, the wiring harness, and the main part is nothing else than something to translate the key presses into keyboard presses. There was a different approach to this project, which was the Raspberry Pi has GPIO pins, so you could actually, if you wanted, use those and save some money, right? I didn't want to do that because they're very limited. I think there's only 18 that you can actually use on the Raspberry Pi. And I wanted this machine to be for two players because I think it's more fun to play with someone else and, you know, beat their ass. Um, so I got this thing called the Mini Pack. It's just a small board that has a lot of pinouts, good wires, put, plug it into a switch. When you press a switch, you tell it what key press is going. So it would be great for the emulators. What do you want to do when you build a prototype? Um, this may seem silly, but just order the parts. Just do it. Because you're going to leave it for later, you're going to focus on maybe I should do it this way, and then just order them, get cardboard, build a prototype. You know, <laughs> it looks happy, I know, but it looks better, yeah. It's like, do it, because that's part of the fun. I built one with Hussey on cardboard, and then we did one on MDF. The idea of the, the arcade machine was to build it myself initially out of MDF. And it's amazing how good fun it was to actually have the prototype running. People loved it, I loved it, it made me very, get very excited about it. And then I was like, okay, cool, uh, I, I know how to do the wiring, I know how to encode uh, the keyboard, I know how to do it, let's build the machine. So again, go to Google, arcade machine, drawings. And I came up through this guy called Quenny that seems to make a big deal out of this. He, he builds a lot of machines just for himself, just for fun. It's got, I don't know, like seven or eight different designs. And he did this one called the Wicked, which is a great name. And he, they're basically open source, right? The, the guy is happy for you to go on the website, use the design, and do whatever you want with it. And that led me to, to the next question, which was, which was do I want to do it full size or bar top? So, full size is like the classic arcade machine, which is, you know, full size. Um, half is a screen, half is dummy. Or bar top. Bar top is those machines that you actually put on top of a table, um, more specifically at a bar height, because that way you save a lot of time in building the rest. So I had this idea, right? This is a render of the week eight. And then I was looking at it, and I was in the office, and we have a beer fridge. <laughs> so I'm like, it's a no-brainer, right? <laughs> Part of beer fridge, excellent. <laughs> so once I knew what I wanted to do, just kept going on, you know, did a layout, which is, again, from Slackcoin, use standard six buttons, main, I don't know, beginner version. Lay it out, decide where the buttons were going to go, decide maybe the color. And, again, another little prototype to see the, the position of the buttons, and keep building it, right? Some wiring, some potatoes. It's good to do this before you actually go to the, to the final product, because it allows you to identify little things like the, the, the direction the wiring has to go. It gets you used to, I don't know, how you need to connect the grounds. It is really good to do it first before going into the final build. And this is the mini pack, right? A lot of cable. Every cable goes to a different button, and that board does all the, all the work for you. It's great. So that board, which is called the mini pack, is nothing else than a little microchip that 
is available on a lot of places like RIS, Element for you know, Farnell. You could build this yourself if you wanted. And it was good because it came with all the pins very well laid out. And what I did was open a spreadsheet, figure out what pin was going to go to what, and that way it would be easier to decide which ones go to the left, which ones go to the right, which one goes up and down, etc. It's good to keep track, and if you want to make any changes, you, you open the machine and you're like, oh, I don't know what the green cable does. Silly idea, but very good. So then you just put it together, right? Get parts out of MDF, get a dog maybe, don't do it. <laughs> I love you, darling. Um, assemble it, right? This was the first build of it, which was all the parts from the WK design again, with the machine, with the buttons, and with main for all running, and Super Nintendo, there you go. It was awesome. When I saw that, I was like, this is gonna be cool. You need to have people play this, right? Because <laughs> they'll be able to come up with, you know, they, they maybe say all the angles not that good. They will tell you things that you didn't think about. Feedback, you know, is always good. And then, make it pretty. Once you have it running, make it pretty. So, what I did, uh, I had different options to do here, but I thought, just use some black paint, maybe. <laughs> That way I can do whatever I want there, or just get a can, paint it, a lot of codes, like six, <laughs> seven, I don't know. And it already starts to look good. It, it already makes you happy, and you just want to finish it, right? <laughs> so, this, anybody knows what those are? They're magnets from the hard drive. My, my idea was for the control panel. I like the wiring, you know, I, I'm an electronics engineer, but well, the university says so, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I like wiring, I like buttons, I like switches, so I really wanted to be able to lift the control panel to, I don't know, show people, oh, look how cool it is inside. So I came up with it, I first played with the idea of hinges, so you, you put the control panel like this and then you open it towards you, so you could show people, but then I came up, I thought, why don't I just use magnets? You know, like in the furniture, you put little magnets, lock it in place, and then open it. So that wasn't good. It, it was rubbish, because the, the furniture magnets are not very strong. So this is a, 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 a work in progress, so I, I'm going to use these hard drive magnets. This is what it looks like. You know, I already knew the dimensions, I knew how to align them perfectly for the wiring, how to make things easier. It definitely helped a lot to build this silly looking prototype first, but it was, it, it helped me save a lot of time. And this is what it looked like once it was painted. I used, um, I had a, a screen um, that I got off, thank you, I think, I hope, I don't know. So, <laughs> that, that was math, and it made me realize one of the details that we all liked about the arcade was a screen. Obviously, if I had space in the, in the machine, I would use you know, an old CRT, but a way to get around that feeling of the main screen was actually to get a sheet of plexiglass cut it and just put it in front of it, and you have like extra glossiness, and it just made it honestly a big difference. <laughs> Budget for infinite joy. <laughs> <laughs> now you start to understand why they cost what they cost on eBay, right? I was mentioning roughly an average is over 300 pounds. I paid 25 for the Raspberry Pi. The joysticks, the mini packs, and the buttons, I got them at the same time from a website that was doing the sale and they had a pack and I thought, you know, I can either go and see, try to outsource them for cheaper or just get a pack, you know, hassle-free, I will know they will all work with each other. The cabinet, this is one of the most hard parts of the whole, the whole project. I'm not very good with tools, i um, terrible. So I had this design. And I was like, okay, I need to make this cheap because I was interested in seeing 
how cheap you could make this on your own. And it turns out it's harder if you don't have the tools. I didn't have a router, I didn't have, I don't know, any drills, I didn't have anything. So, cabinet, arcade, Google, you know. <laughs> I found this guy on eBay that takes the same design, cuts the MDF for you, and ships it for 60 quid. <laughs> Plexiglass, I had to pay 20 pounds because I didn't know this, the way it works. You buy the sheet of plexiglass and you're like, okay, so I want it, I don't know, 55 centimeters by 45. Okay, there you go. And here's the access. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, you know, you buy the whole sheet. I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> so I have spare plexiglass now. And I love speakers. Um, the, the original design includes space for speakers and a marquee, an illuminated marquee, which I haven't got around to do it, but I wanted some passive speakers that wouldn't be powered. And the reason for that, it was like, it's okay, it's okay, nobody panic. <laughs> um, and the, no. The reason for that was like, you probably will fall after this, but I'm donating the machine to thank you. Uh, not yet. <laughs> I'm donating it so I didn't want powerful speakers because it will probably will go in a communal room. It will be nice if you can hear when you're playing alone, but when there's people having lunch, you don't want to, you know, annoy them. Anyway, so that got me to the next slide, which is. I made it under 200 quid, which was my first objective, but I was interested in seeing how cheap you can make this. And if I knew there was a hot tub here in Taku, you know, I would have gone, because we probably could have bought, uh, built the, the, the mini pack, the encoder ourselves. That's a cheap you can buy. We could have done it. They probably would have spent some time doing uh, the GPIO with me. Ask friends. Now I have plexiglass. Do you need plexiglass? <laughs> Recycle stuff, you know. Someone gave me this screen for free, it would have cost me 50 pounds. So it's amazing the amount of things you can actually, you know, recycle from friends, things that other people will just throw in the bin and they'll be useful for you. If someone has speakers, you know, that size, it's worth always asking. And definitely one of the big things, apart from the wiring harness, which is because I'm lazy, I didn't the wiring harness is just the piece that puts all the, all the wires together and it slots in and gives you the output. I could have done that myself, save seven pounds. But the wood wasn't the main thing that I could have cut it a lot of money in. A size, 15 pounds delivered, you know, as opposed to 60. And that's, that size is good enough to build two arcade machines. So once I got to this stage, I started thinking about the whole the project as a whole, which was one of the main objectives, and the biggest of them all was the Raspberry Pi is great, is amazing, but it has limitations. Okay? There the Pi is like an underpowered Pentium to a 300 megahertz or something like that. It, it can do miracles. It's the same thing that happened when they, netbooks came along. Oh, a computer, 200 pounds, yeah, I'll buy it. What do you mean I can't watch YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> it's so slow. You know, understand what they are, and don't do what I spent a lot of time trying to do, trying to compile emulators that apparently were optimized. Just accept them. And maybe at the end you come up with something better. And for me it was, I got rid of a lot of extra games that help the thing come together as a whole project because it meant that I could only run games like from the 80s and 90s. You know, I could have guessed Street Fighter 3 to work, but I have, I don't know, Tetris. <laughs> <laughs> Other thing I didn't think about it was the mini pack, that little bugger board. You can only program it on Windows. 
It's really annoying. I had to ask for a Windows PC. It felt very embarrassed. <laughs> and then I spent like, I don't know, a couple of weeks trying to make this tool I found on some strange GeoCities website <laughs> that apparently programmed these chips lies. <laughs> it would have saved me, I don't know, a couple of weeks. And then something silly that you don't think about, like how the hell do you power the cabinet all together at once? Because you have a screen and you have the Raspberry Pi. And at the moment I haven't sorted that yet because I'm lazy. Um, you just get a PCB done and a switch and you know you can do it yourself, but it's things that you actually need to think about beforehand. Plexiglass, epic mistake, I got it cut it, and I said I did it, I don't know, 50 by 35. And what did they do? Well they cut it 50 by 35. It didn't fit in. Because <laughs> that was the exact measurement. So it actually didn't fit in. I had to go, you know, thanks to the hack club guys. They use a laser cutter to trim <laughs> a millimeter of the plexiglass. <laughs> Speakers and sound, silly thing you don't think about. Yeah, how am I gonna do that? I ended up buying these very cheap Amazon three pound speakers that are just made out of cardboard and then rip them off. <laughs> Things. But then the biggest of them all is a dummy button. If, if you guys will have a demo afterwards. There's a button on the front that doesn't do anything. <laughs> and then you actually press it and you can't press it. And that is because the design, going back to the beginning, was made for Japanese joysticks, which happened to be half as thick as the European one I used. Which meant if the joystick is here, if the button goes here, it doesn't, you know. So I couldn't do it, so I had to take it, to take it off. Um, I had to rewrite some config files and maybe work around so the way I, I, I do it is I use the same button for insert coin for player one or two, but then some games require to use it differently. So I have something called shift key, which is every time you press a specific key, all the other keys do something else. It took me a long time to come up with that idea. <laughs> and then painting, you know. I, I don't paint. I, you know, I'm a Sisani, I don't even program here. Yeah. <laughs> it's like six codes? What do you mean, a primer? What is that for? <laughs> I had no idea, I had to do all those things. So it's, it's all those little things that, yeah, made the project fun, but it took me more than it should have. So if, you, if you're thinking of doing something like that, I'm talking slowly to see if this comes back. If there you go. Um, so if you're thinking of doing something like that, try to organize yourself a bit better. In my case, I just did like this because I knew I would never get it done. Um, I set up a very crappy GitHub page where I actually have a bit more info about the thing. If you guys are interested, go there. I'll probably update today or tomorrow with more details. Um, and I wanted to, I don't know if I can quickly show you the arcade machine. Yes. Yeah. 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 If I can't, this is fine. Um, here we go. Was just you know 
going into the arcade place and spend some time there, no money, just to help other people play. And their model, is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they're trying to do like a member membership thing, or you yeah. pay a high fee for X amount of hours. Yeah. I don't know, I'm not too convinced. It's maybe just not for me. I would like to get it done. It is an idea, you know, having an arcade place, it, it, it would be pretty cool. Um, maybe no kids are around, that would be awesome. No bullies either. That would be pretty cool.